Kepler had always known that the universe was harmonic because it was knowable to the mind of man. God, like one of our own architects, approached the task of constructing the universe with order and pattern, and laid out the individual parts accordingly, as if it were not art which imitated nature, but God himself had looked to the mode of building of man who was to be. From the publication of the Mysterium Cosmographicum when he was 25 years old, until the end of his life, this idea guided him. He recognized that he was continuing on the path of the Pythagoreans, completing what they had left unfinished. He knew that they had conceived the sun to be at the center of the solar system, and supposed that they had also shared his hypothesis that the relationships between the nested platonic solids determined the distances of the planets from one another. He really never gave up on this idea of the interposition of the solids in the planetary system. Although he advanced upon it, he still held on to the idea that this was a necessary part in the development of the orbits of the solar system. He also had a number of other hypotheses about the, the organization of the solar system at that time before the, getting the advanced data. When Kepler got Tycho Brahe's data for the observations of Mars, he was able to discover the organizing principles for a single orbit. He first hypothesized that each planet, including the Earth, traverses its path according to equal areas swept out in equal times. He then considered the true cause of the planet's motions towards and away from the Sun, and determined that an elliptical orbit would satisfy the physical conditions. With the problem of the single orbit solved, entirely new questions were raised. But this still didn't answer the question of why the particular ellipses had the eccentricities that they did out of an array of an infinite amount of elliptical orbits that could possibly exist in the solar system there was only particular cases that actually did exist. So why was that the case? In seeking to solve the unanswered questions about the planet's motions, including the cause of their eccentricities, Kepler left the domain of visible space and explored the domain of audible space, the realm of music, which the Pythagoreans thought of as the underlying fabric of the universe. He first examines and does an exhaustive examination of the boundaries of visual space of geometry that is plane geometry. He does the same thing with solid geometry, then extends that into the musical domain, extends that into the auditory domain, and examines all these characteristics of space. He then takes you from the standpoint of an observer on the sun and actually constructs the entire solar system based upon those principles. He conceived of the sun as a composer, the generator of the harmonic relations among the planets, and thus sought for the harmonic proportions in the fastest and slowest angular velocities of each planet as seen from the sun. For example, on the day Mars is closest to the sun at perihelion, it would appear to traverse a 38-minute arc in the sky. On the day it is farthest from the sun, at aphelion, it would appear to traverse a 26-minute arc in the sky. The ratio between these is almost the ratio 2 to 3. When a vibrating string is divided into thirds, and two-thirds of it is plucked, it makes the harmonic interval of a fifth with the whole string.
Kepler found each pair of planetary extreme motions corresponds to a different harmonic interval. And this is what Kepler finds at the very, towards the end of his life, that the reason for the eccentricities being the way that they are was so that an observer on the sun could actually discover that the entire solar system was arranged in such a way that both the major and minor mode in music, the, that is the major and minor modes that we find in classical composition, are expressed through the eccentricities of the orbits, through the motions of the planets at the extremes of their orbits, at their apsides, uh, at their perihelion and aphelion. While the eye perceived that the proportions of visible space were analogous to the distances of the planets from each other, the ear perceived that the relationships of audible space were analogous to the speeds of the planets. The mind then had to conceive of the juxtaposition of these two senses, of sight and hearing, to perceive the relations among the speeds and distances of all the planets together. This was Kepler's discovery, the culmination of his life's work. He discovered gravitation as the harmonic, unifying principle underlying the relations among all the bodies in the universe just as a musical idea unifies multiple voices, singing seemingly radically differing lines in a complex polyphonic choral piece to a single effect. Although Kepler was willing to discard any of his assumptions, the one thing he held on to was that the Creator's universe is knowable to the mind of man. The student studying Kepler can't help but be inspired. <laughs> 